start with our we'll start with our karakia, and then after that uh, it'll be a me. It's been a long time since this mm -hmm. committee has been. So uh, our karakia uh, will be. It's a new one called Whakataka Te Hau. <laughs> As I found in a former council meeting there, we we found that the Māori part of Whakataka Te Hau was brilliant. Mm. Voluminous. When we went to the English part, it was terrible. Right, so we're going to practice the English part and then we're going to do the Māori part. So I'll set the pace. You need to set the volume. Kai te pai tēnā. Okay. Cease the winds from, from the west. west. Cease, Cease the, the winds, winds from, from the south. south. <coughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Let the breezes <laughs> come over the land. Let them come over the sea and intermingle. Let the red tipped dawn come with a just me. Come with a sharpened ear. A touch of frost. A touch of sleet. The promise of a glorious day. Oh, we're going to have to practice the English part. Te <laughs> 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 Oki nei iau ki te tāhu hoa tarangi, te roi ho mai rā ki te matau a Māui e, e tako tōnei. Kā tahi, kā miharo, kā tahi, kā mihi. Me ki rai ōna taonga katoa i ho mai ki a tātau. Ho mai ki a tātau. Nō reira e āku rangatira, tēnei te mihi ki a koutou, e hui anō mai i tēnei tāu, tēnei te mihi, o ki mai, o ki mai. O ki mai rā. O ki mai rā, kai nunga ki ngana tua āhua tango rātou ko a mene atu ki te pō. I mua rā, i te marangai, e tau nei ke rungi a tātau. Kai nunga ki tēnā, te marangai, pēnā, i te waru, e ngaro nei, puta anō kei rotu ki tēnā, i te hika a Māui, anei rā tātau, e mihi, e tangi, e mihi, e tangi. O reira koutou rā hoki haere atu rā. Aere ki te ara whaiti, aere ki te wāhia kore hoki mai. Aere ki te pūtahi nui o re hua te pō tū tangaro pīpiri te taka te urunga te moenga te whakārihia koutou ki a koutou. Hoki mai rā ki a tātau, te hongora, e aku rangatira e noho hui nei, kai rotu ki tēnā komitea ki a nei ko te Regional Planning Committee. Nō reira hara mai. Hoki nei au ki a koe rā e hene uru. Tēnei te mihi ki o koutou tia mana i o koutou, koutou rangatira. E tai ki tēnei te tēpu, kia noho tata mai rā ki a koe rā e koro, e karauna. Kia noho he hui, kia āta tirohea, te whakahaere o e nei o ngā, ngā kumiti o tēnei hui, a tōna wā, ka noho nei ke nungu ki tēnā tūranga. Nō reira, ka mihi ki a koe rā, E te rangatira, e mana, haramai. Haramai ki tēnei tāu whare. Te kaunia era arohe, atamata wā Māui, e te rangatira, nai mai, haere mai. E te taha nei, tā koutou karau wā, a karau. Nō reira, tēnei te mihi, he neru. Tēnei te mihi. O e tātou tātou, te wairo, arā tēnā koutou, me ki rātou koutou, rangatira. E noho kainua ki tēnei komiti. E te tua hine e, e Michelle. Hara mai. Haere mai kia whakaranga tirahi ai tēnei komiti o te kaune hera nei. Me ki rā kainua ki tēnā tūranga o api ata i ngā wā i murira. A tōna wā ka hoki mai tēnā ranga tira kia whai tētahi wahanga matatau kia mihi ki a ia. Me oona whakapau kaha kainua te whakahae rere tango o tēnei komiti o tātā. Nō reira, e te tua hine, e te rangatira. Haere mai rā ngā āhua o tō tāu nei awa, te wairo hō pūpū hō ngene ngene mātangirau. 
te roho e te wairo ka tahi kami. Ai au, ki o koutou o te ahuriri, te tuawhiti o ngā hapu e mana ahuriri, nau mai haere mai te tiohine e tānia. Haere mai rā me ki rā kairunga ki tēnā tūranga i mua rā, ka noho nei tō tāua nei tuahine a lāna, me ki rā i mua mua mai rā i tēnā. Tō rei rā, ko tāua i muri rā, kairuta ki tēnā rōpu o takahurangi, i tēnei rangi, ka noho a koe, hei tia mana, kairunga i amaha mana ahuriri, me ki rā te whanganui o rōtu, nō rei rā te rei te mihi, e te ranga tira e te tuahine, hara mai, hara mai, hara mai rā. Kia tātou katoa. Ko tēnei e noho me ki rā kai tā taui hua tā waka o tā tēpū nei, e Thompson. Nā u nei whaka oho mai i au, ko tēnei tō kumiti tuatahi. Ko ena tā roa nei, kā re e hui mai tēnei tā kumiti. Nō re re ko tā ku e mihi ki a koe rā, hai re mai kai wanganui ki e nei ngā rangatira me ki rā kā re kai tuatu ki e nei e noho e hui nei. Nō re re e tā rangatira. E tau nei ke nō ki tēnei o tamatea, tēnā wahanga mai a ngaru roro ke mihi atu ki a koe. Me ki rā i tō tāua nei, whanaunga tō tāua nei hoa, Charles, mai a ngaru roro, tai hoki rā ki paritū, anei rā tōna wahanga, nō reira kānui te mihi ki o koutou katoa. Nō reira aku rangatira kāre tō rō tāku nei tū, kua mihi a kua tangi ki a rātou kua mene atu. O ki mai rā ki a tātou, te hunga ora, anei rā tāu whare, anei rā tāu rōpu kaimahi o te tūrira nei, nō reira e ngā tiamana tokorua nei. Te nite mihi ki a kōrua ki a tātou katoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, huri nō tēnā tātou. Anyone know our waiata? Staring at me. I don't. Te arai whana tuaira, pūra kou e tū mai nei, e piki ki runga, ki a māra māhau, kei raro ko te mātau. Te whakatikanga ake ki runga rā, ka tithi whātu ure utai, te arai whanatu ai rā, ko te kura ki ahau, hei tohu no ake, e te kura i te re utai, Te whakawhiti o te rā, te whakaai o whenua, hoki muri mai au ki te iwi, te arai whanatu ai rā. Ai, ko tāku kore rō whakahotinga ki a koe rā, e te whananga mai i tēnā te waka o Māui, Eric, ubi mai rā, ubi mai rā, e te rangatira, eho. Koe nga ngā pito o tēnei wā, ngā whare o tātāu, kia tātou katoa, tēnā koutou, mā tēnā koutou, huri nō tēnā tātāu. A tēnā koe piri mō tō mehi i tēnei a... I tēnei rā, ai me mihi katika ki ngā kanohi hau, kei wanganui i a tātou ko koe mana. Nau mai hoki mai Michelle, kei roto i tēnei whare, ki a koe tānia tēnā koe. Ki a koutou katoa, nau mai hare mai ki tēnei hui o te RPC. He mihi anō mō ngā hunga kua wehe atu, I te mārama, ko JB, ko Pat McGill, e rā atu rangatira, haere atu rā. Ai, ka huri i tēnei wā, so just a big welcome from myself and my co-chair Tanya Hopmans to our first RPC hui since... Forever. Forever. Ai, so for the start of our term, 
anyway. Um, and also just an acknowledgement of um, our Fano who have uh, been through what they have the last three months and still on the road to recovery. Uh, speaking about recovery, we will have a comprehensive presentation from our exec um, on uh, the response from the Hawke's Bay Regional Council perspective um, and our activities into recovery. Um, on that <coughs> note, I'd like to acknowledge Piri for his leadership um, during that time, Tēnā Koe Piri, uh, our exec, who did a tremendously amazing job, either here or within the group control of civil defence, um, all our staff, all our marae who stood up, um, and all our villages that had to uh, go through what they did, particularly within the first week. Uh, so many acknowledgements this, this afternoon. We have our agenda in front of us today. Um, if I can please take apologies. I have Kerry uh, Ropiha, Will, Councillor Will uh, Foley, Councillor Yeriff Van Baek, do I have any other apologies to note? Yep. yep. <clears throat> Di Roadley. Uh, Councillor Di Roadley. I haven't received them review, Peter. Yeah, yes. I'm happy to move those apologies. Can I please have a seconder? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be leaving at 3.30. <coughs> so, yeah. Leaving at 3.30. Any, anyone else leaving early? Yeah, I'm going to leave at 2.30. 2.30, 3.30? 3.30. We're going to have a short toy then, oh. by the sounds of it. <laughs> Our world champion's coming home today, so I'm off to the airport to welcome him home. Mm. Kia ora. Yeah. Mm. Kia ora, kapai. So uh, I've received all those. Can I have a <laughs> second uh, for those? Thank you, Councillor Hokianga. All those who agree say aye. 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 Those against. Kia ora. Yes. Is it appropriate just to add to the agenda? I know we shouldn't, but mm. we don't have minor items on the agenda. Oh, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Kapai, call for minor items. Tanya. I'd like to um, speak to clearing of the awe at Tangoyo, please. Mm -hmm. Tangoyo. Any other minor items? Are any of the staff allowed to raise a minor item? <laughs> Depends. What's your minor item? It's in relation to Nick Pete's pohiri. Yes, kia ora. Any other minor items? Kapoi. Just say we don't have a call. We are waiting on Charlie, he'll be late, and one coming online late. So if we just proceed um, to wait for a couple of more members to raise the quorum. Kapoi. Uh, but we will move on those minor items. We will add as item 10. Uh, are there any conflicts of interest declarations to be made for today's items? There are none. Kapai. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, have a juggle of our agenda today. Uh, item 4, I've just been told by uh, the governance team, doesn't need to come here, that it can go straight to the Regional Council for decision. Uh, so we can take that off our agenda. Uh, we would like to bring item six forward, uh, which is the Cyclone Gabriel impact on Hawke's Bay, the response recovery and reviews. Uh, then following that item eight, which is the Kotahi Plan Verbal Update that will lead us into item five, freshwater management units, uh, then seven, eight, nine, oh, sorry, seven, nine, and 10. Kapoi? Before we get there, I'll, I'll remind you around what item we're up to. <laughs> Kapoi, so I'd like to invite, um, our, our exec team up, uh, including Desiree, uh, Kerry, Louise as well, uh, to present uh, our item six. Kia ora, Chair. Uh, clarification, there's, there's two presentations. So the first one will be from the exec, which is on the response, and Kapoi. then we'll move into recovery, which is a 
slightly different presentation. Come on. Yep. We'll start with the response. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora, Chair. And the outline of that is uh, it's the first page of item six, which on Stella is page 21. Uh, so there's myself and Katrina here on behalf of our executive leadership team. Uh, there's 29 slides. This is what was shown to the Māori Committee a little while back. Given the 3.30 or the 3 o'clock uh, departure times, mm -hmm. going to really speed up uh, the slide deck here. And if you've got any questions, we'll keep scanning. And if you've got a question, just pop it to us and we'll stop there and respond if we can. Kei te pai. Choice. It's not going to work. <coughs> So this was originally put together by Chris, uh, our asset management uh, general manager. And so much of it is very much focused from within Chris's area, particularly uh, rapid repairs and the development, uh, or I suppose the, the re, re establishment of our flood protection, particularly across Hedatonga. I won't actually read through everything. Uh, it's, I'll let you read it up there. My apologies to those who are on screen. Zan. Uh, if you've got any questions, just stop me as we go through. These ones here give you an indication of some of our telemetry sites, water level sites that are in place. The ones that are circled up there just give you an indication in terms of how uh, what the extreme weather event actually sort of brought uh, to our uh, telemetry sites, what was projected and what we actually okay. received. Well, thanks, Mark. Uh, the next bunch of photos here just give you a bit of a visual. These have been taken over a timeline from the 14th of February. It just gives you an idea of just the impact upon the whenua and our river systems and all of our infrastructure. Petey, just a patoi, can we share this presentation to committee members? Absolutely, yep. that won't be a problem. Yep. Can I leave that with you, Pete? Yep. Please. Thank you. Yeah. I think the other part to add to this, and we'll touch on it when we get to uh, the, flood, the rapid repairs, is that we have a live, uh, uh, there's one part on our, on our website, HBRC website, which gives an indication of how the progress of those uh, predictions flood protection repairs is going. Earlier we acknowledged that there were lives lost, eight in our Hawke's Bay region. Yeah, so from, uh, from the night or prior to the, on the Wednesday prior to the cyclone arriving, uh, we had actually stood out our emergency operating centre. We had one down here, as did some of the other TAs and also the GCC, uh, which is down in the Hastings uh, Civil Defence Centre there, that was also stood up in anticipation. It's an idea of uh, just all the logistical administrative stuff that was covered in those first few weeks. Uh, so we're still working through, uh, some of you would have seen uh, the announcements from uh, Minister Robertson and other ministers in relation to uh, the land categorisation process we're going through. We're still going through that in conjunction with the minister and with the recovery agency. Uh, the Disaster Relief Trust was set up quite early uh, in the weeks following uh, the, the event, uh, and that's been since updated. Uh, there's uh, Susie Young, our GM across corporate services. Uh, she has the administrative part to play in that, uh, but very much working with our chair and our mayors. Could I just add to that, Petey, that the, we're into phase two of that fund. So phase fund was um, being able to apply as an individual for a thousand um, and for marae and organisations of two. Uh, we're into phase two now, which means we've increased those amounts, so up to $10,000 per individual to apply for their cleanup, um, up to uh, 10000 for marae and organisations to apply. So you can go to the Mural and Chair Disaster Relief Fund uh, website and go through that application process. HBRC infrastructure. So this is the front page. If you were to go onto our website, this is what you would see. 
and it gives you an indication as to, you can expand it, as to where the breaches were, where there was damage uh, to our flood protection across Edatonga Plains, and the progress that has been made uh, in response to that in terms of bringing them back into state. They'll be brought back to the state that they were previously at, which is a 1 in 100. And I think some of those numbers um, have been updated since that slide. So I think we're up to 1.8 kilometres worth of stop bank repaired. Uh, so this part here, Ian would have done from our integrated catchment management area. Uh, they've set up the rural recovery. Uh, we've got Richard who is leading that uh, in the rural area and working on closely uh, with Dai up in Wairau. Uh, and the other catchment areas across our region. Just give me a nod if there's any part you want, want us to stop at. Go. Yep. So this is where we've been at to date. There have been quite a number of community meetings run by uh, the TAs. Uh, we've, we've managed to attend almost 99% of those to actually support the TAs and the community meetings that have been held uh, both in the townships but also in the rural areas. That one on the right hand side there, I'm not sure where it's at, but it was my first opportunity to drive through to Waidor yesterday after the opening of the Waikare, uh, well, opening of the road, actually, uh, and the devastation is still very obvious, particularly through Tamoyo. Yeah, yeah. That one on the right gives you an idea of just how the land has been impacted. Thank you. It's a bit small for you to read that one. Uh, our National Civil Defence Emergency Management Structure. Uh, normally on paper, we'd have 14 full-time equivalent people that are part of <coughs> And we were fortunate from uh, when uh, civil defence, when the national state of national declaration was made, to actually have support from other regions, uh, from other agencies, such as NEMA, and many others who actually came to the call uh, to us, uh, to Gisborne, to Coromandel, and those ones north of there, uh, sort of given the wide uh, impact of Gabriel. Um, this one here is probably one that's going to be spoken to by Louise uh, later, later on, so we'll just bypass that one. Yeah. Do you want to talk to us? Um, just that there are um, a number of reviews um, taking place uh, that are all at uh, confirming terms of reference currently. One is the CDM Joint Committee, uh, made up of myself and the mayors. And then at the lower, larger box is the Hawke's Bay Regional Council um, Independent Review. And a part of that are a number of reviews um, done in-house but peer-reviewed. Uh, Pātai Tāku. Yeah. Um, Hinawai, in respect of the reviews, where are they led from? Where do they? Yeah, sorry. where are they led from? Just in respect of the, and I'm particularly interested in the Sedum Joint Committee review. Mm. Mm. Um, so that one's led by the Joint Committee, and um, we have the CEO of Central District Hawke's Bay lead on behalf of the CEOs of the councils, um, who have engaged in Plexity, who is an independent uh, review company that has expertise around civil defence. Um, so they're scoping at the moment the terms of reference and that's the stage where we're at. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I've just read the Auckland one so I'm interested in this oh, one. Yes. <laughs> Kia ora. And entirely sits with, uh, with, with government, with the minister and with cabinet as to whether or not there's anything at a high level. Oh, here we go. Jen? Oh, can I ask a question? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> in terms of reviews, the um, predicted versus the expected, or predicted versus the actual rainfall, I've based this in um, council 
Okay. Obviously, a breakdown somewhere in terms of what was predicted because what fails, like in the S, was twice, twice the percentage of what was predicted. Um, I know that those figures are not within the control of HPRC, the ones that come to us, I assume, from that service. Mm -hmm. Where is that being investigated? Who's investigating that? Because that, that has mm -hmm. a big impact on alarms, etc. Uh, so data is collated internally of Hawke's Bay Regional Council that very much is modelled off the back of the Met Service forecasting that is done, which is the case here. Uh, but a lot of that will actually come out, probably touch on both reviews, both the civil defence and also the internal one around flood protection. Um, so all that data has been collated by HBRC. It's sitting there in anticipation of the review panel, the independent review panel. Our panel. Um, so yeah, the panel that's been set up by yes. HBRC. Yeah. But who's looking into what Met Service did? Because we can only mm. react to what we're given in terms of information, but there's obviously a breakdown there because the, the cyclone was far worse than predicted. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, I'm probably yeah. not the right one to answer there, but anything to do with Met Service in terms of a review of what they've done, their practices would have to be outside of ours. Yeah, it would be a NEMA function, so National Emergency Management. Um, they are the ones that, um, I suppose, have that arrangement with Met Service to provide that information. Um, so we have advocated that they do a national inquiry into um, their role at a national level, which would include Met Service. So we're advocating for that, but um, at present we haven't heard back uh, from uh, Minister... McAnulty on uh, where they're taking that review. I'm just thinking about the ones that were pretty badly hit up there. I mean, the percentage <coughs> difference, you know, when you're talking 39% and above, that's massive. Mm. I'm just thinking about the lack of warning and preparedness of whānau to evacuate if they'd known, if the predictions mm -hmm. were closer to the reality. Mm -hmm. The predictions Absolutely. are a long way off. Yeah. Is that something perhaps Tangata Whenua groups could support the request from um, council in terms of having that investigated? I just think we, if we don't get the information, we can't prepare. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think this will form part of the review, obviously, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. These questions Tani is asking. I would say that the, that factor needs to be looked into, um, and then we could pass it on to NEMA to say, this is what our findings are. These are what our findings are. Chair, it's quite within the realm of this committee and yourself as chair uh, for this committee uh, to uh, provide that emphasis, mm -hmm. that reinforcement, uh, and our communications directly with NEMA or anyone else for that matter. Yeah, I'd like to see something actually go go to them saying that this committee is concerned about so the. Um, you just pull your mic closer to you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, it's good that HBRC is doing a getting a review done mm. of what we have done. Mm -hmm. The reality is our response relied on information from mm. someone else, which was Met Service in this case. Mm -hmm. And there's a problem there because the predictions were so far apart from what actually happened and the consequences were massive. I'm surprised mm. we didn't lose more lives. So, yeah, I would like to see a strongly worded letter going mm -hmm. to NEMA, if it, NEMA is the right mm -hmm. outfit to be putting this to, to emphasise that that is a key, a key factor that needs to be investigated. Absolutely. Well, the two of us can work on that. Okay. Thank you. Any other part I for Petty or the exec? It's oh? time, sorry, Chair. Yeah. Um, just time frames in regards to the TORs. The TORs. Um, we have tasked uh, Bill Bayfield, who sends his apologies, uh, our interim CEO. We've tasked him to come back to council with some confirmed terms of reference, um, and that will be by the end of the month, those confirmed terms of reference. By then, it is hoped that the panellists are confirmed, um, and it will be up to the chair of that panel um, to set forth some timelines. Yeah. Good, Chair, thank you. Uh, with your approval, I'd like to call Louise up for the next 
part of this discussion. Louise is our recovery manager uh, for Hawke's Bay Regional Council, working alongside the recovery agency and also other recovery managers across the TAs. Good to Louise. We bring up the other oh, presentation. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, I've stolen. I've, stolen. I've got the wrong mouse. That's my fault. Sorry. Okay. I wondered why it wouldn't move. Is your one? No, Sorry. it's the. Uh... No, I gave it to. Yeah. It's the American one that's not up there. Oh, is that? No. That's what I just got. What's the one that I gave you? Yeah, I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. Just use the arrows. Right. Kia ora, everybody. Um, I'm Louise McPhail. I'm the recovery manager for Hawke's Bay Regional Council. Um, I'm just going to run through a a presentation that um, was uh, supposed to go to Maori Committee, but we ran out of time, so um, I'll give it today. Uh, it's, a, it's an overview of how this organisation fits into the regional recovery framework. Um, and it's, it's looking backwards a little bit because obviously we've come a little way from when this was initially set up, but you have not had the opportunity to see it yet. So. Um, I'll just, I'll go through it. Um, this may be the most important um, or interesting slide for you. Um, so um, this sets out the regional, the Hawke's Bay Regional Recovery Agency uh, of a framework with the agency in the middle. Um, the um, groupings on the left are uh, the inputs into that regional recovery agency. So they are the locality plans that the local... Push the mic towards you. Yeah. They are the uh, locality plans that the local councils have put together. Um, they are there's an environmental resilience plan from this organisation, which um, has a look at, at the impact of the um, cyclone that we know so far on the environment. What our immediate response was in this organisation around flood protection, uh, the silt and waste work streams, uh, what rural recovery might look like, and then the sorts of investigations that this organisation will need to undertake in the coming months and possibly years to understand the impact of the cyclone um, on the environment. The locality plans from the local councils are based on community and whanau welfare, roading and transport, um, well-being, um, the responsibilities that the local councils have, including some of the waste. Um, some marae, uh, Māori hapu iwi, have put together their own locality plans and they have also been submitted into that regional recovery agency. The Regional Recovery Agency um, has an oversight board, and that oversight board reports to the Matariki Governance Group, which has representation from all the different councils and PSG groups from across the region. And then they feed up through the um, Severe Weather um, Committee um, at a national level, um, and then into cabinet and, and the money that um, we have requested will be processed through that. On the right hand side um, are a series of pillars or PO um, that they have and it may not be completely clear on there for you but um, the, the PO are the environmental resilience, economic growth, far now and community well-being, the primary sector, resilient infrastructures, and then a, a smaller bit, which is recovery transition, which is focused around civil defence. Um, each PO has a lead agency. Then um, Hawke's Bay Regional Council is the um, lead for the uh, environmental resilience PO, and we also feed into the primary sector PO. Um, everybody had to submit um, a, a bid, if you like, by the 14th of April. And then we had to put together a plan by the 28th of April. 
um, which didn't give us a lot of time. We didn't have time to um, go out and discuss with our communities, to um, have conversations and get feedback. So this is very much the first edition of the plan. Um, and we will be working towards the second edition of the plan, um, which is due in September. We haven't had guidance on it yet, um, but we in, envision that we will have had the opportunity to go out and, and have those conversations, um, have engagement with our communities and work with the other TLAs to um, put that together. It's just to compliment that too, Louise, is that our council chair is part of Matariki Governance Group, and also in the Oversight Committee, we have Tania, who's in amongst us here. Yeah, and also on Matariki, we have um, the leads of each PSGE um, involved in that ropu. Just a question, Louise, with the September date, what drives that being the end um, of addition to? So... Um, the first funding bid that was uh, given in April was around the May budget, which is this week. Um, and we've already had some um, outputs from that, some um, announcements from central government. Uh, Kiriana, from, uh, Kiriana Brooking from the um, Hawke's Bay Regional Recovery Agency has indicated that having a second plan in September with a potentially second set of bids um, determined by what we've received to date and prioritisation of the work that we will be doing uh, to set up for the new government that will be incoming after the election. So it's to present to that government um, what, what it looks like for Hawke's Bay. Um, so the Regional Recovery Agency provided some guidance um, and um, that's Kerry will be joining us um, after, when I finish my presentation to talk a little bit about the first point here, which is we are required to co-author and co-develop the plan with Mana Whenua. Uh, so we will need to reach out to um, everybody across the whole region and, and work how best we can with the short time frame that we have on how that will work best for everybody. Um, we've submitted the first funding bid by the 14th of April. Uh, we've submitted the first edition of the plan, which I think has been circulated to everybody and is available on our website um, by the 28th of April. And now we uh, are working towards what this second edition might look like. This is a little bit more detail around uh, the governance structure. So that Matariki governance at the top with the Hawke's Bay Regional Recovery Agency. We have then repurposed our Environment and Integrated Catchments Committee uh, within this organisation chaired by uh, Councillor Sears as our recovery committee uh, and our papers and updates will go to through that committee. Uh, we have a very small kind of immediate recovery team which is um, just made up of a handful of people um, but the whole organisation kind of feeds into that. Um, the way that we are structured, the existing work streams and things will, will all flow into the recovery work. Um, and then we have um, our treaty partners and other partner agencies and the wider community that will feed into all of that work that we do. Um, this is just an internal structure. So you can see we've got three of us at the top that are the recovery team, but we work right across the whole organisation and have touch points with all work streams and members of staff. Um, this was the timeline that we were given. So the guidance came out on the 31st of March. Um, we had to have the bids in by the 14th of April. We had our first draft of the plan to the recovery committee here on the 19th of April, and we had to submit it on the 28th of April to the regional recovery agency. Um, we would have liked obviously to have had some more uh, time to, to engage the wider community and, and Mana Whenua, um, but that will start now, and that's the next phase. Um, just a quick question. <clears throat> when you put in the application for funding, what's the compliance working with Tangata Whenua? As in, so we put the funding into the Regional Recovery Agency. They collect all the bids that they've had from us, from the Marae locality plans, from the TA's locality plans, and consolidate that all up. They've gone through to make sure that um, it's fair uh, so that if, if somebody has asked for something which would actually benefit the whole region, they've tried to extend that across the whole region. And if there are double ups, they've tried to consolidate it into what the actual amount is that's needed. But we don't have input into that. We just supply our bit that, that we think from a recovery purpose based on that first plan that we need. 
Oh, you mentioned that uh, as a result of the application, you have to work with Mana Whenua. So what's the compliance for the funding to work with Tangata Whenua? So um, I'm not completely sure what that will look like. Um, this was all done, you know, quite rapidly for that first 14th of April date. But for the <coughs> September date, we will be able to be out there and having those conversations. Can, can I note that and take that to Susie, yes, who yes. looks after all our funding, um, to try and get an answer if there is one yeah. or not. Yeah, cool. So I'll note that and get back to you. Yeah, because that would mean that our CEs would have been contacted. I'm not sure if there is, okay. and I'm not sure what it looks like. Well, yeah. Can Thank I just you. add there, um, if uh, one of the slides that talked about the PO and mm. the other inputs, etc., at the very top of the slide is, yeah, I can't read it, but under Building Back Better, Safer and Smarter, it says something in there about mana whenua. Genuine partnership with Māori, yep. addressing inequalities, stronger productive economy, fit for purpose infrastructure and lifelines, climate resilience and adaptation, working with Te Teo, the natural environment, not against. Yep. So genuine partnerships with Māori is what the Matariki Governance Group has committed to. Yep. And my take on, on the mana whenua engagement is you can't have that unless when you're doing your plans, you've actually engaged. Mm. So I, don't, I haven't been aware of it as a requirement <coughs> in terms of funding, you know, if, you, if your bids are successful, you get this. But all the Matariki um, members, including every council, has committed to those principles. Oh. And so that's where I would see that coming in. Oh, OK, couple. Uh, through, through, our, through our chairs, I just want to... Um, can we go back to the previous slide? Uh, mm. the, framework, the framework. The framework. Just sitting in there, what, what's always kind of um, been unclear to me, we've got the, um, I guess, the, the Māori, Hapu, Iwi, sort of sitting down that, that far left. Yeah. I can't quite quite read it exactly. But I'm, I'm just wondering um, what the difference is in terms of mana whenua or tangata whenua uh, representation at, uh, in that space as opposed to sitting in the, the Matariki governance. And, and what, what are the definitive roles or responsibility or contribution from each of those. So if I was to talk about the part on the left, that's about ensuring that those uh, in our both urban and rural areas, in terms of mana whenua, marae, hapu, iwi, are engaged at some point in this process. In the main, uh, operationally, that probably works through the relationship managers that we have across each of those <coughs> three wahanga of matai. Uh, inside uh, the middle part there, that's where you have your, your PSGE representatives, I think, as our chair has indicated. Uh, so there is a need for one to be talking with the other, or at least knowing that they're all part of this process mm. moving forward. Mm. Uh, kia ora. Mm -hmm. Through the chair, if I can add to that too. Um, the PSGs uh, have been involved um, through Matariki, but also in the locality planning. Mm. Um, our marae are all involved in that um, throughout the TLAs that I know of. I'm not quite sure around the regional council, but I'm pretty sure it's coming through the Māori committee and this committee here. So um, in relation to your pātai, um, Thompson, um, I know that um, these things in Napier, I've been at a number of locality meetings where <clears throat> a lot of our marae are sitting in there, Taipenua as well, in um, Hedatonga. So a lot of feedbacks <coughs> come through those plans. <coughs> and as um, you said, um, some hapu have provided their own locality mm -hmm. plans. So that's where I, I think where the rubber hits the road for us. Um, it's not always going to be perfect. We're always going to miss people out. But I think um, from the process I've seen, it's working OK at the moment. So kia ora. Kia ora. Mm. Kia ora, Councillor Williams. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair, Co-Chairs. I, um, <laughs> whatever, I uh, don't so much have a question as a, an observation and a response to the previous question. The first observation is just uh, uh, in awe, frankly, Louise, of the work that you collated through what must have been just so many uh, different streams within the Council of Specialist Input 
the turnaround time, uh, and we saw a draft of it, you know, three or four days before it went in, it was just extraordinary. Three weeks to produce that document. It's an exemplary document. It's thorough. I think it's absolutely spot on in terms of priorities for specific actions and projects. Um, and, and truly quite remarkable. Um, one of the best I've seen assembled by this organisation, and certainly at that pace. Um, the, uh, the points I just wanted to note is that there is reference under support for additional funding requests to support ongoing initiatives, including engagement with Tangata Whenua, so that's <coughs> recognised in there, but obviously uh, a WIP and <coughs> one of the methods as to implementation is to engage with mana whenua and communities at place. So mm -hmm. we all had it in mind and saying yes, but we had no choice, this has to go out the door <laughs> to the recovery agency, we weren't really able to stand in its way. Was, was some assurance that community voice, including from Mana Whenua, was um, definitely uh, envisaged for the September deadline. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Sure. Um, I do have a few more slides, but Carrie will be coming after me and she will be talking to you about that Mana Whenua engagement and guidance from this committee on, on how best for us to, to do that between now and September. So I'll, I'll leave that to Kerry. I'll just finish my slides. And, Kia ora. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your kind words. It was a, um, <laughs> it was a, a, a team effort. There wasn't one work stream within this council that didn't contribute to that. So yeah. um, it, it's an organisation wide. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, this is what the, um, the plan looks like. Uh, it should have been circulated to all of you. Uh, it was to outline the priorities for this organisation, focused on the environment and the other uh, touch points that we have across those TOW, including rural recovery, um, to give um, the Hawke's Bay Regional, um, the Hawke's Bay Recovery Agency um, an understanding of, of what needs to be in that environmental resilience PO when they collate the regional recovery plan. Um, I won't go through this, but this is uh, the different work streams that we put through into that plan um, and, and some kind of work streams that sit under it with the rural recovery sitting in there across all of it, but they're the kind of the main tastes, if you like, throughout the resilience plan. Question, which um, Kerry will uh, be talking to you next. I think that's the last slide, but um, just on that, the next steps for us are uh, we are currently meeting with the Regional Recovery Agency to put together the different PO chapters, if you like, of the Regional Recovery Plan. So we will be obviously having a, a input into the Environmental Resilience chapter and the Rural Recovery chapter, um, and our flood protection will be feeding into the infrastructure um, chapter. Um, those conversations are happening this week and then the Regional Recovery Agency will be submitting the Regional Recovery Plan to central government by the 30th of June. Um, and that's the first edition and then we'll be working towards the second edition um, in September. Through you, Chair, are we able to share this with everyone? Around this, there? absolutely, yeah, please, Peter, yep. 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 circulate it. <coughs> yep. Just as a preamble before Kerry starts, so earlier on I talked about uh, our Māori Partnerships team, in particular the three relationship managers that we have as part of that team. So we have Anthony Tipinematua covering from Ngarururu River right down to almost to the Cape. Uh, we have Jack uh, smith Bellingall who's covering from Ngarururu, no, from Tutaikuri, sorry, uh, through to including Maunga Haruru. Uh, and then we have Nathan, who's based up in our Waido office, who's covering the northern part, uh, which includes Paho Weta all the way through to Paritu, just above Mahia. Over and above that, and we have a group called Te Kupenga. And Te Kupenga brings together informally all of those, like the Māori Partnerships team that you have, in each of the TAs. So if we have Pam Cooper down there in uh, Central Hawke's Bay Tamatea, uh, we have Dwayne Coleshaw at Wairo District Council up in Wairo. Uh, we have Morihu Tomo and at least three others in his team that are part of Napier City Council. And we also have Dr. James Graham, Charles Lopatini and others who are in the Hastings District Council area. And they work closely with our own in terms of ensuring that we do uh, engage with Manafila right across the door here. Sorry, Kerry. 
probably said most of what I was going to say, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so no, um, Jack was unable to be here today, so I'm essentially just covering for him. Um, but really, it was just an opportunity to um, kind of explain the next steps for you all, um, and we've done the same with the Māori Committee as well. As um, our intention is is for for the team for Māori Partnerships to to reach out, particularly with our PSGs and Tai Whenua, um, and talk about what this might look like for you, because obviously it has been stipulated in the framework that we will be co-designing. But I understand that there are also desires from you all to develop your own locality plans, and that you may not necessarily want us to. Mm -hmm be co-designing our piece if you're wanting to deliver your own. So those are the sorts of, um, I guess, logistics we need to work through. Um, there is an expectation for us to engage, and that is certainly something that we will be doing, but we want some direction from you all as to what that will look like and how you might be resourced uh, to enable this to occur, because as Louise has explained, um, there have been requests for budgets, um, but we just need to understand how we're going to actually make this work in, again, what is a very short time frame. So um, you can expect Jack and the team to be reaching out to, to you all um, as to how we can work in this space, understanding what your capacity is and what your desires are, really, um, and, and how, to, how to address this next phase of, or the next edition of our resilience planning. Um, so uh, Jack did ask me to, to sort of pose some questions to you in terms of, you know, how we might look to apportion funding, whether that um, might be on, um, you know, a, a, an equal basis across the region or whether we're looking to prioritise those areas that are most affected. Mm -hmm. um, so these, this is just really to stimulate your thinking prior to, to Jack reaching out. Um, but as Petty has mentioned, we are working with the TLAs. We are looking to um, create those synergies so that we're not um, creating that engagement fatigue for you all as well. So, you know, if, if we are reaching out to you and, and your territorial authority is Napier City Council, then we do that together. So we're not having two separate meetings. Um, and also, uh, you know, once we have initiated this first round of engagement, once we've worked out what that might be, then what is the next step? Um, so if you could turn your minds to thinking about what is what is the next step, you know, how are we to ensure that the mana whenua voice sits solidly within our next environmental resilience plan, or does it, like I say, sit separately within your own plans? So those are the, yeah, the types, types of questions that we'll be asking. Kia ora, thank you, Kerry. Oh, I don't know, that's quite loud. Um, thanks for that, and I think you're on the button there in terms of should we be coordinating with you or co-designing with you and funding what that looks like, or do you just need information from us to build into your own locality plan? Um, so it's just that offer of support in general and how um, these representatives would like to undergo their own plan or with us. Yeah. yeah. So any comments or ways you'd like to do that, just get directly in touch with Kerry on how you'd like that to look. Yeah, Petey? Perhaps just an observation uh, that might assist Chair. Uh, you might have already started progressing your locality or your recovery plan, and you might be doing that collaboratively with others, uh, such as an example, Wairua District Council, Tato Tato, working closely together. There are some templates out there if, you're, if it's a cold start for you and you're looking to how do, how do you bring one of these plans together. Uh, a good example that we were privileged to um, receive a presentation from was the Ōmahu recovery plan. And the Ōmahu community, uh, where I, they've been presenting to different TAs and to ourselves, it was a plan that was produced uh, within two months of the event itself. It covered all of the Ōmahu area of interest, and it also involved all of the peoples within that, Māori, Pākehā, Mai, everybody. Uh, so there are some templates and examples out there if it's a cold start for you. Something to consider. Thank you, Chair. But just quickly for you, um, our Chairs, is probably this is more directed to our Māori partnerships. It's just... What I notice is the interchanging um, terms of mana whenua and tangata whenua, and for my own personal clarity, and I'm pretty sure my fellow councillors would benefit from it also, is to try and figure out um, how, how those are defined, if you like, and 
in, in particular in this stage of recovery. Would you like me to go first, Councillor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my understanding here, and it's the one that prevails across our uh, Te Kupinga network, is that mana whenua are those who hold mana or authority in those respective areas. And whereas tangata whenua can also include Māori who are domiciled outside of their traditional areas. Example, uh, if I took one part of my whakapapa from Ngaroru Kitahi, uh, then in some ways I could be tangata whenua, but not mana whenua in this particular area here. So to some extent, the PSGs hold mana uh, whenua, uh, authority over those respective parts where they've engaged with their hapu, they've done their settlement, and in there is identified the areas of land or interests over which they exercise authority. I just started, I thought I might leave the rest of the <laughs> Tanya, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question, but um, this comment I think we made in our prehui, and I've heard it a few times, which is, I don't think treaty relationships get suspended during emergencies or recovery but sometimes it felt a little bit like that in some of the things that happened. Um, I, my personal expectation is that HBRC and TLAs will continue to um, engage and work collaboratively with their treaty partners. Um, PSGs are recognised as treaty partners, uh, but in terms of communities and marae, um, my preference would be that um, TLA's regional council will engage with PSGs and for every group there will be a different way of dealing with that grouping. There's no one homogenous way whether you're dealing with wide or Maunga Haruru or Hira Tonga Tamatea. I think they all have their own ways of working and we just have to continue doing what we know works in each of those areas. So for some it might be engaging with the PSGE, it might be they will be saying, go talk to the marae about that stuff, or, you know, it's up to, I think that grouping dictates how they want to be engaged. But I don't think we dismiss all the, all the relationships and avenues that we've already built up, so we, we should be employing those. That, that's just my whakaaro, you know, on that. Plus, I think our locality plans have already been done by some, mm -hmm. and that will signal who they are engaging with in their hapori in their community, at this point, knowing that we've all got more engagement to do all over the show. Um, the other thing I would say is, I know for the MTT plan, we had some requests for research and things, which actually need to be carried out by people like our friends at HBRC, but we wanted to put it in there because it's important for our takiwa that this research around land use recovery, you know, soil recovery and things like that happens but we're actually not equipped to do it, but we want to make sure someone's doing it. And if someone's doing it, we want the information that relates to our area. So I'm imagining the plans have a whole mishmash of all sorts of things, but everyone's just putting in their tunnel for everything they think that's needed in their area, but may not necessarily be done by that lead. So it may not be done by MTT because we're not equipped, but we want to make sure someone's doing it. So we'll be having discussions mm. with you guys to say, Hey, we really want to see this. Is you know, does this match up with your plan? Can you add it or, or something like that? So I imagine across the board that will be happening. So yeah, coming back to your question, I, I, that's just my facado on that one. I, yeah, okay. I, I can <coughs> recognise that. Um, I guess the proposed um, changes to the um, natural and built environments bill that there was um, a strong suggestion that set the definition of mana whenua was either your PSG or your, your iwi entities that were, I guess they're a settlement entity um, in, in a different time frame across the timeline. But when we're using the term sort of mana whenua and tangata whenua interchangeable across um, some of the documents, it, it can get a little, a little confusing. Um, and it doesn't kind of um, help too much when quite often we have the, the same people that populate those <laughs> roles and responsibilities. And I just heard um, Sri uh, bring up that um, the engagement fatigue, and you know, yeah. if there's if there's a if there's a risk of engagement fatigue, or there's a there's a risk of um, disconnect, then I think it's something that we just probably want to um, 
Consider. Mm-hmm. Kia ora. Good to see. Laura? Oh, so um, just on this engagement, is this for the review that you spoke about first? Is that just till September or is this part of a bigger environmental resilience plan? Um, to contextualise that, if I were to go back to my PGC and say, hey, they need some engagement, for us it would be for um, the hapu authorities of Omahu and Porangahau <coughs> for that particular engagement because they were the, the, the effective communities mm. and we would support that engagement with those two communities. So is that just for this or that's what I want to be careful of? Yeah. 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 The recovery so, plan. Yeah. The <coughs> regional recovery agency has tasked the regional council with engaging for yeah. this next edition of our environmental resilience plan, but they've also tasked the TLAs with engaging on their mm-hmm. locality plans. Mm-hmm. So this is why I'm saying to you now that we are trying to work very closely with the TLAs <laughs> so that we're coordinating that engagement rather than having a double up. Kapoi. Yeah. And you're right, Laura, it's about those most impacted on the ground. Yeah. Those are the targeted communities that really should be feeding mostly into this recovery plan. Okay. Uh, if we're if we're finished there with questions, then uh, I think part four of our paper talks about a swealer and a swirler. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Gavin is uh, here to actually bring some light enlightenment to both yeah. of those terms. Yeah. Kia ora. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to watch you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kia ora, Gavin. Oh, sorry about that. Technical hiccups. So I gave a presentation along similar lines to the recovery committee, I think it was, and lined up for the Murray committee. Uh, but again, due to time constraints, didn't quite w- walk through <laughs> lovely new acronyms that we have in our vocab. So since the cyclone, the government has introduced two some presentations. Oh, yep. Good as well. Okay. Thank you. We'll grab a copy for you later. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, government's introduced two new bits of uh, two new acts. The first one came out pretty much pronto after uh, the severe weather impacts, not only post-cyclone Gabrielle, but cyclone Hale as well, and also the Auckland uh, anniversary weekend uh, rainfall impacts that impacted further further north. The sweller, the first one, essentially introduced some extra special emergency legislation powers under the RMA for emergency works, cleanup and and what have you. There were already some pre-existing things in the RMA for emergency works, but this just uh, added to them and broadened them out, not only to local authorities and utility operators to do certain emergency works and cleanups, but also owners of rural land uh, at the time. It also enabled the likes of Zan, Councillor Zan Harding, to be a legitimate vote and presence um, online for (laughs) meeting purposes, just as what was in place during our COVID response. Um, So there were some tweaks made to the Local Government Act. These were all really off the top shelf. Things were ready to go because the government and New Zealanders had learned some lessons from the Canterbury earthquakes and the Kaikoura earthquakes that some special legislation was required. As an extension of that, the next tranche of emergency legislation was the SWELA, the Severe Weather Emergency Recovery Legislation Act. So this SWELA um, is primarily to support the affected regions, not just Hawke's Bay or Tainaiwhiti, but all those further north of here as well, in their recovery efforts. 
Now the recovery efforts in each of those regions is not alike. They're all, they've all got their nuances. So the legislation through this Swirla uh, Act doesn't have too much prescription in it other than to enable the ministers of relevant legislation to introduce what is called Orders and Council. So despite its name, Orders and Council are not made by local government or councils, they are made by ministers with sign-off ultimately by the Governor-General. Governor Again, this kind of Order and Council instrument was quite widely used in the recovery post Canterbury earthquakes excuse me, <coughs> and the Kaikoura uh, earthquake yeah, recovery too. These things, these orders and councils are not made by ministers lightly, nor do they happen overnight. There are certain protocols and consultation requirements from one relevant minister to another or from, from the minister to lead out with uh, a re reasonably short period of public consultation as the matters may Dylan, require. can I just get you to speak into your microphone a bit more? Thank I you. can see the red light, but obviously it's still not clear enough. Uh, yeah, so what I'm just f flagging there for you is that creation of an ordering council is going to take some time. It's more in the case of several, at least several weeks, if not several months, to pass one of these things. The various government departments are working through all the bits of legislation that they're responsible for. So like Department of Internal Affairs, DIA, has oversight of the Local Government Act, uh, Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act, aka Lagoima. And then off to the side, you've got the likes of Ministry for the Environment who look after the Waste Minimisation Act and the Resource Management Act. So each of these departments have their own strands of legislation. Each of those government departments is advising their respective ministers about what potential orders and council may be necessary in perhaps Hawke's Bay or perhaps Bay of Plenty Regional Council or perhaps all affected regions, all those regions affected by um, severe weather in the last couple of months. So internally here, some of the staff have been thinking about, crikey, our work programs have been heavily disrupted. Mm. How could an order in council from one minister or, an, or another enable us to support our regional recovery efforts? How can we make the boat go faster? to speed up that recovery? And are there some legislative requirements, milestones, deliverables that exist at this point in time that while they exist in legislation in peacetime, <laughs> <laughs> nowadays they're just a, a distraction and unhelpful, yeah, um, uh, onerous obligation when we're all trying to get back on our feet and help our region and communities recover. So we have thought that there are some timeframes and milestones and uh, limitations that get in the way of our recovery. Here's a couple of examples that we were on the cards to roll out some, I'm talking about the, the right hand column there, we were on the cards to roll out some new national regulations around freshwater farm planning fairly soon. Mm -hmm. So we've been in conversations with official Ministry for the Environment officials about how can Hawke's Bay get at the back of that queue now, and other regions come forward. Stock exclusion regulations are not too far away to be enforced nationally. Many of our farmers, growers, are focused on making sure that their boundary fences are reinstated, let alone fencing back from waterways. In many cases, some of those waterways have shifted in their locations. Um, other things are crikey. The requirements around creating a, a new long-term plan, they're pretty onerous. How could we perhaps get a kind of a, a special treatment to get a long-term plan done faster, swifter, more with more agility? Mm. That's something for the LGA uh, lane of things as opposed to RMA. So that's just a, a small flavour of some of the thoughts that we have had. None of these are confirmed and certainly none of them are guaranteed to be accepted and put forward through ministerial processes. 
As far as our Kerry and I have had some series of conversations with MEFA officials, some of their initial priorities for orders and council are these things up here. So MFE in particular has got a couple of tranches of order and councils that they are preparing. Uh, so the, some of the priorities are around temporary accommodation, certainly dealing with this issue of waste in all of its forms, in all of its locations, and certainly government announcements made recently around budgets can help make that go faster even more. Uh, those are sort of in what's called tranche two of the work priorities, and it's earmarked for those sort of to go through their necessary steps and be in place, if memory serves me right, August. August. Yep, thanks Kerry. And some of these other things are in tranche three, which is sometime beyond August, fingers crossed, but sometime before the local body, uh, sorry, local central government elections. Uh, yeah, so we continue to maintain conversations with relevant government departments around our ideas of orders of council, equally having similar conversations about what our ideas might be and what similarities we might have with our TLA colleagues too. This is a ongoing work in progress as we speak. Mm. Thank you, Gavin. Um, so would you say this is a bit of a hold some things, um, slow some things, speed other things up in terms of our work programs <clears throat> and a bit of reprioritisation, going back to MFE to say we need some support and help with all this work that we have to do that was on our plate and we'll talk about the placemat soon. But basically, that's where the team's at at the moment. Very true. Except one extra addition to that: it's not just an R sorry, not just an RMA MFE conversation. It's yeah. with a range of government departments and ministers, which makes it even more complex. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so Thank the you conversations much. we've been having um, with the ministry have included all of those regions that have been affected. So we've had you know 30, 40 people on a on a call all saying this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, everyone's coming at it from different directions because the impacts have been different. Um, and if you're a TLA, you're probably more interested in how this affects your um, building consenting processes rather than your freshwater planning. So, you know, it's there are yeah, lots of conversations around orders in council, mm -hmm. which we are party to, but there are multiple work streams, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Tanya. Yeah, kia ora, Chair. Um, just in relation to Orders in Council, we've been working with MFE. Um, I guess you've been in touch with a number of mana whenua groups, um, tai whenua groups, marae even, <clears throat> to give feedbacks in particular on the waste minimisation in that area. So I think I've attended three Zooms so far just to make sure that our voice is heard <clears throat> in the end so we can give feedback. So it's not just they're not just discussing with TLAs and you know councils and that. Yeah. It, like you said, it's right across the board. Um, but I guess from our perspective as PSGEs and other groupings, our our people, it's important that you know that we're involved too. So kia ora. Mm. Tanya. Um, if there's a proposed relaxation of a requirement relating to plans or, lead, or RMA that is the business of this RPC. Will we hear about it first? Will, will it come to us? Because I think it would be good that we know mm -hmm. where we're looking to move some of the goalposts. So the indication is, or sorry, the legislation states that the Minister um, will consult with affected tangata whenua and uh, uh, communities and councils. So one would assume <laughs> that this RPC would be part of that conversation, either through the council function mm. or through being affected tangata whenua. Mm. So, yeah. We'll but the time we'll frames are continue. very, very short. Yes. The indication is that it would be a three-day okay. consultation. It Doesn't can be it. longer, but that is the minimum requirement. So mm. sometimes these things can move very, very <coughs> swiftly, yeah. um, and it, it might be consultation mm -hmm. over email. I suppose what I'm saying is if we are proposing 
Matters for Order and Council as HBRC, and they relate to RMA matters that this RPC would normally rely on, things like the national... I saw the National Policy of Freshwater up there. Yeah. It would be good to bring it here, even if we have to do it by Zoom or something, but I'm just thinking if you guys are actually thinking, oh, we should move this or postpone that, just so that we're across it and understand what is being proposed before before anything is put in place. That would be the case. That's to acknowledge what the original planning committee Does. is there for. It's part right. of our... Yeah. Point. So I think if, if you go to the MFA list, they have indicated on this list that, um, I think somewhere, amending and relaxing wider planning requirements, um, they've indicated to us that that would not be until maybe tranche four or five, which is right before election time. So... Um, they are thinking through what are the options, I suppose, now, and, and we're testing, well, not even testing, we're, we're talking through, you know, what this means for us, um, and I suppose putting some options on the table, what, what that could be, then there are multiple options. We don't exactly know what they're thinking at the moment. Um, this, is, this is taken off their website, this is what they've shared with all the councils, so um, the information is, is out there publicly, but um, in terms of the fine, finer detail, mm. we don't know what that looks like yet. Simple answer is yes. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kia ora, Laura. Mm -hmm. oh, kia ora. Is the legislation only relative to the recent cyclone, or is it going to create resilience for normally flood-prone communities? At this point in time, both of these bits of legislation are to are only applicable to those regions affected by either the Auckland anniversary weekend intense rainfall event up north. I think Cyclone Hail was mentioned in there. The dates of that escaped me, but and also certainly Cyclone Gabriel. Full stop. That's there is specific. the ability for those for those bits of legislation to be added to if mm -hmm. the government wishes to to pick up some subsequent severe weather uh, events that might, might be around the corner for us. But the ability um, for orders in council to um, be undertaken are time limited, and I, th I can't remember, it's a, it's a couple of years, isn't it, beyond the date of the um, legislation being enacted. Okay. No other part, I? Kia ora, Gavin. I have a question. Oh, kia ora. Just a question on... Um, Farm water quality plans, I think they're called under the Fresh water farm. Fresh, 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 fresh water water farm plans. plans. <laughs> if those regulations, Cyclone Gabriel aside, or the Swirler aside, have they ever had they been issued yet, or are they still? No, they're not, not in place yet. We've been but waiting for them. They're very mm. imminent. Yes. So explain to me, were they going to be rolled out on a sort of region, a differential Trunch. region mm. basis? Trunch basis, yeah. Yes. And so that's why you're asking to go to the back of the queue for yep. us, because it's yes. just going to be a blanket across New Zealand. Correct. Okay. Just, just a comment, Chair. Um, so we talked as one of the agencies that we're working closely with is uh, Ministry for the Environment. Um, this might be a surprise for our own staff even, uh, but Ministry for the Environment have just uh, appointed interim kaiwhakatere roles, otherwise known as navigator roles. Uh, they're working to ultimately put those in place in each of the regions. Uh, our one is Joyce Ann Laihania, <laughs> who, who's back, back here on a, a three-month uh, interim stint with us, mm. and she'll be cited and positioned with the Māori Partnerships team. Well done. Kia ora. Full circle. <laughs> yeah. Are there any more questions for Gavin? Yeah, sorry, Gavin, can you just, can, through the chair, can you tell us, are there any OICs out at, at the moment? Was there one around rates remissions or something someone told me? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. well done. Uh, yeah. I stumbled across this just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's, one that's, it's one that's yeah. very specific to mm. Hastings District, and it's about their rating mm. revaluation re uh, process. And I think in a, in a really short way, it's to make sure that the rating revaluation exercise that Hastings has to do mm. does not factor in the cyclone impacts of the cyclone. Mm. So it's essentially 
doing a rating exercise, rating valuation exercise as if the cyclone did not occur. And then you can apply for rates relief, but you have to apply for rates relief. I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> so that draft order in council has already been go, been mm -hmm. through its very, very short, I think it was three or four days consultation period, and so it's back with the responsible ministers to to adjust it, adapt it, and then put it in um, in front of the Governor General for their sign off. And just further to that, MFE have told us some of these, like you said, will be quite swift actually. Yeah, especially around the waste. Mm, I'm not sure if you've got any dates. No? No, nothing fixed. Okay. Pai, kia ora, thank you. Um, is that item completed, Piri? Kia ora, thank you. Thanks, Gavin. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Kerry. Oh, Kerry, you could probably stay, stay up here. Um, so the recommendation is to receive um, these reviews and staff reports. Um, could I please have a mover to receive? Thank you, Nikki. And a seconder. Thank you, Michelle. All those who agree, say aye. Aye. Those against, carried. Kilda. So we're moving now on to item eight, um, the Kotahi Plan Verbal Update. Thanks, Talking about the placement and priorities. Correct. <laughs> um, so it's important to, to come back to you all, um, given that we haven't met for quite some time. We, we had planned an RPC meeting. Uh, during the time of cyclone, yeah. um, <laughs> and um, we had wanted to step you through freshwater management units, which is now going to be the next item, so hence Nicola's here. Um, but in advance of that, it's probably worth just giving you all a verbal update on where we're at with Kotahi, because our plan, our programme of work that we had for this year was, um, was agreed, and we were all coming out to visit you at place and have our hui, um, rather than having our all governors at Elwood, where we all um, you know, congregated and talked through the issues. We were coming as a policy team and with other staff to come and talk to you about the issues, the environmental issues at place. And um, obviously that is now not possible um, for a number of reasons. Um, first and foremost, we've had a cyclone. We have communities who just are not able to have these conversations with us right now. We have logistical issues. Obviously, we've not been able to get to White Or, you know, thankfully now we have we have access. Um, but, you know, it, there, there are a multitude of reasons why actually working through our freshwater planning, which was the primary driver for Kotahi, is just not appropriate. It is not sensitive for us to be having this work program proceed um, for now. So it is on pause. Um, I've only just recently um, regained my full complement for my team. They've all been pushed and pulled to different pillars of the, uh, the, the region um, responding to the cyclone. They've been in um, yeah, response mode and, and now we're actually fully engaged in the work that Louise is uh, leading and managing around the recovery. Um, so again, our, our work pro program has has for want of a better word, and I hate this word now, we have pivoted um, as a consequence of the cyclone. So we are fully engaged in, in the recovery response and what this organisation needs to support mm -hmm. our community and, 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 you know, rebuild back better. What is it? Uh, smarter, it? Stronger. smarter, stronger. Something like that. So that's that's kind of where we're at as a team at this stage, um, and I think it's it's important for us just to, to put this on the table and just and acknowledge the fact that you know to come out and talk about freshwater visions and values right now isn't appropriate. Um, it's not to say we don't still have our eye on the prize in terms of our environmental improvements and looking to be better as an environmental organisation, you know, driving towards better water quality and driving towards better, you know, environmental management. That's still the key goal. Um, but in terms of actually delivering on those policy requirements right now is, is just, uh, it isn't appropriate. Um, so what this means, we haven't had anybody give us permission to do this in terms of central government. Um, we do still have to fully acknowledge that we have a December 2024 deadline that we are expected to meet. 
Um, hence why we are having multiple conversations with the Ministry, um, just to explain that we are, we are busy doing other things and we are busy supporting our community in the recovery space. Um, however, we do, do still have to anticipate that there will be no relaxation of that work program. And what that might look like in real terms, we don't know. Um, there are requirements on us under the MPSFM to deliver freshwater plans by December 2024, and we do need to delineate our freshwater management units. That is one of the requirements. We do still have to monitor our environment. We do still have to do a number of things. And, um, you know, for our scientists right now, our water quality baseline has shifted significantly. We don't know what it is. Um, and we're not even sure that we know what that will be in four years' time, um, whether we'll be back to where we were pre-cyclone or whether it's going to take eight years to get pre-cyclone or, you know, we don't know what those projections actually are in real terms until we've established what the baseline is now. And we have to do that across the entire region. But what we do know is that we will have to monitor and we will have to send information back to central government on freshwater management units. Uh, so whilst it may not seem entirely appropriate to be having a freshwater management unit conversation today, there is still logic in doing that. Um, we were hoping to get this decision in front of you, like I said, um, when the cyclone hit. We'd pr previously taken it to our Māori committee after our all governors conversations, and we had endorsement from them, um, I think it was the week prior to the cyclone for these freshwater management units. And what it also does is it assists us in the recovery space. Um, it assists all of our teams, particularly our scientists, to understand, you know, if we are reporting on a freshwater management unit and we can send that through to central government, that we are at least embarking on um, a foundation piece of work, which will then support our freshwater planning when we get to that stage where it's appropriate to deliver the freshwater planning and the policy which supports it. So. That's kind of my preamble to Nicola, but it might be worth pausing to answer questions before we step into that second piece yeah. where we are requiring a decision. Kia ora Kerry, thank you. And just acknowledge all the mahi that's gone in from, from the staff and also us here in terms of the all of Governor's wānanga that did happen prior to now we have a, a totally changed environment tile. Um, so you're right that, you know, the, there will be many parts of our rohe that just cannot cope at this stage with this piece of mahi. Um, so acknowledge uh, that consideration. Thank you. Uh, Martin Williams. Thank you, uh, Chair. Look, <clears throat> conversations and assumptions can be dangerous things when they don't come to anything uh, and we might not get the exemption or the extension. On, on the bold assumption that from the PSG reps in this room, there is support for putting uh, kotahi at place engagement on hold until we uh, shake off the recovery, um, or at least the response. Um, perhaps, in fact, I'd almost be prepared to move that this committee, uh, signed by each of the PSG reps uh, and the co-chairs, and indeed the councillors, mm. formally write to the minister and to James Palmer, and say for the reasons that our baseline monitoring on which we were proceeding from 2023 or two is basically redundant. It's um, mm. no longer fit for purpose. And two, we're simply not in a place to meet our treaty commitments or those under the NPCFM for engagement at Manapakahari level. That we simply have to have an extension. Uh, there's just no realistic uh, treaty consistent basis upon which you could proceed otherwise, and actually don't <coughs> under, um, so that we know where we stand. Um, I think that they, I've shared this thought about stopping the bus previously in all governors' meetings to uh, ensure we can actually do a decent job of kotahi, um, and I'm wondering if the time is right to make that move more formally and in writing. If there was an appetite for that, I'd be prepared to move that this committee resolve accordingly, but I just wanted to table the idea. 
Thank you, Councillor Williams. Yeah. When we get to the end of the item, we can put a resolution forward. Yeah. yeah. I've mentioned that before Thank you. the FMUs. Yeah. Thank you. Any other partai of Kiri in terms of the Kotahi plan update or comments? I do. Yes. Um, As Martin said, well, we can we can ask <coughs> for an extension, but we may not get an extension. Um, what happens if we just miss the date? <laughs> Despite best efforts, anyway, what are they going to do? Come here and shut us all down? Mm. <coughs> and you can't answer. No, I'm, I, I'm not sure I, I can answer. It's a cheeky question, I know. Yeah. But really, Look, I think that has always been a question uh, for this council, is what happens if we do miss the date. Uh, certainly it's for the council <laughs> to honour the, the requirements of it uh, that set for it by government. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's uh, requirements that are set down and then... Even when the requirements were set down, we said this was incredibly ambitious for us to do the Kotahi plan, particularly as we were looking at redoing the whole thing, right? Um, if we just look at what we must do, not the whole thing, just mm -hmm. focusing on fresh water, my concern is that if we put a pause on it entirely, that we find that we have to unpause it and we are then up against it to try and meet those dates. That concerns me that, particularly particularly for, I'm um, thinking Tang and Tafenua groups, who will need significant time to mm -hmm. do the work that we know we need to do. Um, we haven't discussed the capacity. Um, I think it's safe to assume that there isn't a lot of capacity. But I am wondering about the conversations we have to have anyway around recovery. Um, we've talked a little bit about this before, where some of them are similar. So we might be talking about appropriate land use. Well, that ties straight into water quality and quantity. So some of these discussions are going to have to be had anyway. Mm -hmm. What I'm worried about is if we say we're not going to do the Kotahi plan, we're going to pause it for a while, we don't release funding to tangata whenua groups to go and get on with the mahi if we're contracting people to do that and we were planning to do that, some of us. Um, and then we just hold off on that and then we have a rush and we're not prepared and then we get antsy because we don't feel we've been able to contribute, you know, contribute the way we need to. It's not an answer, I'm just putting it out there, that's, mm -hmm. that's a risk. And I think um, something that we should be considering as well is that at some point in time, we will have to do our freshwater planning, whether it's through the RMA or, you know, the, the new Act, or we have to do the work. Um, is there a way we can work more efficiently, smarter in this space? Because at this point in time, in terms of capacity, Tangata Whenua don't have it, and within this organisation, because we are focused on recovery, mm. I would suggest we don't have it either. But that's not to say that there are not parts of the recovery conversations that we're having that we can't transfer or move through <coughs> to the freshwater planning. Mm. Uh, through you, Chair, I, I think Kerry's uh, said it, as in Tani, you've already said it yourself, uh, the conversations are similar, if not the same, as recovery as they would have been for freshwater planning anyway. Uh, no one's suggesting that um, we hold off doing any work. So the policy team are busy, uh, yes, on recovery, but thinking all the while how that recovery work might add value to a freshwater planning uh, scheme of work. Uh, there is funding there available for the vision and values work. How does that funding combine with uh, recovery funding to enable uh, the PSGs and Taifenua to do the work that will uh, benefit both streams? That, I think, comes right back to the conversations that we had at the beginning of this meeting is, what does meaningful engagement look like for recovery with 
uh, the PSGEs in Tai Whenua. And so that's a conversation that we need to have around this table, around the Māori Committee table, and be smart about how we do that. So that we are not uh, subject to MEFEs and the minister, I mean, ultimately it's the minister's decision, and, and he has indicated, or the ministry has indicated, we won't get an answer before August on a delay for our planning. Um, so that, in short, in August, we're, we're not suddenly, as you say, grappling with, we've now got less time to do the same amount of work. I don't think it's realistic that we can achieve a kotahi plan um, that is not possible. So I think the whole kotahi plan isn't uh, a goer, but certainly the freshwater components will need to be. Um, and as you as you know, recovery is about land use and appropriate land use and where we want land use in the future. And that does feed into water quality incredibly so, and water quantity. Kia ora, Jock. Uh, Chair, I'd be supportive of the concept of the letter for the reasons that we've talked about, but if I, if I was the recipient of that letter, I would find it much more palatable and easier to consider if there are time frames around it. Mm -hmm. So that could, yeah, just that. So you're saying here's when we expect to have the various tranches of this work complete, and so you know what you're dealing with, and it's much easier for you to hopefully endorse what is requested. Yeah. Not stopping, there's a pause, and then we'll mm -hmm. start again in a timeline. Yeah. Um, maybe a question for Kerry or Katrina. What sort of um, advice have you sought from MFE or indications you've given to them so far around our freshwater management plan? Yeah, so we have been uh, quite clear at the outset. I, I believe when we had three days to submit uh, <laughs> our requests for uh, orders in council, uh, one of those uh, requests was to seek a delay uh, for our kotahi plan and we set out the reasons for that um, and I think that's as far as we've got really and a discussion on wh whys and wherefores. Uh, we've discussed our progress to date on implementation of MPSFM uh, planning uh, so that they're fully aware of where we're at. Mm -hmm. And um, what advice can you give um, with the strong letter? Maybe we can work together on just being supportive of whatever requests that have been put in so that they, they align, yeah, with some timelines that seem appropriate. More yep. than happy to. Thank you. Any other questions for Kerry on her update? So um, we're happy that the RPC uh, drafts that letter um, and can send it on behalf of uh, both the co-chairs. Sorry, to you, what's the decision we've made? Uh, to draft a letter to MFE requesting, requesting a, a, pause. a pause and also extension of the freshwater management oh. planning Sorry, regime. Um, through you, Chair, I'm just, um, I, my question is, does that also need to include full council, given that it is the full council that has ultimate responsibility of delivering the NPSFM planning? Mm -hmm. So we can draft it um, and include the council in that. Kia ora. Yep. Thank you. Chair, I would suggest you call it a reprogramming of work yep. as opposed to a pause. It's nice. It's an extension mm. of the timeline. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all those suggestions. Um, so that's Kerry's update. Um, so I'm happy to move that we've received it. Um, second by Tanya Hopmans. All those who agree, say aye. 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 Those against, carried. So just to be clear, the, the draft is to be completed by your co-chairs? Uh, yeah, we'll start drafting yes. it. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, we are on to FMUs, and I just want to pause before we go there, given our last discussion, and possibly uh, getting direction from committee members on whether we should proceed with the next item of freshwater management units, uh, given uh, the situation we've just discussed in terms of uh, capacity and uh, pausing or reprogramming as it's been put. Tanya? Um, again, thank you for the work on the FMU paper. Um, I know um, the Tangata Whenua members have discussed it. Uh, we did have some concerns about the proposal 
to go forward with six FMUs at this point. And I'm not sure that it would be a constructive discussion to have that now, given the discussion that we've just, or the resolution we've just passed about reprogramming our timeframes. So my suggestion would be we defer discussion of the FMU paper to a later date. Um, that would give us some time to have some more conversations with our staff about when we need to do that. Uh, but I did hear from Kerry that she um, mentioned that it was necessary to have FMUs to provide some certainty or mm. some help to our scientists. I just think that the concerns that we've discussed as Tangata Whenua members around FM, those particular FMUs <coughs> won't be resolved um, here and now. So I do have a concern if we're going to proceed to the FMU paper and try and have a discussion because I think we've got too many concerns that would stymie that. Not to say we're not wanting to have a discussion, but I'm just not sure that's productive to have it following what we've just said in our past resolution. Any other comment? No. So would you like to propose to defer the paper? I would. Uh, would anyone like to second that, Nikki? Thank you. Um, would you like to speak to that? No. no uh, any more? Okay, we'll put that on the table. All those who agree to defer this item say aye. 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 Those against, carried. Kia ora, thank you. We, we may have a cup of tea now. But Chair, if it helps, I've got a motion for the letter, but if it's already in, in the minutes, we don't need it. But No, no, we've already. Oh. Yep. Okay. Uh, we'll have a quick cup of tea and then we'll come back and carry on knowing that some have to depart kapoi. Awesome. Five minute cup of tea break. <coughs> Kilda. <Kia> yes, <ora. coughs> I need a bit.
uh, some needing to leave earlier. Um, we'll try and whip through items seven and nine. So starting with seven, the May 2023 policy projects update. Um, if we can just take that as read, and if there are any questions for Kerry, any burning questions? Carl, oh. oh, there seems to be none. So I'm happy to receive that update. And Tanya second. All those who agree, say aye. 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 Those against, carried. Uh, item nine, the statutory advocacy update, also uh, authored by Kerry. All takers read. Uh, are there any questions? Kaori, <coughs> that's great. I will move in Tanya will second. All those who agree, say aye. Aye. Those against, carried. Kia ora. Um, Minor items. Uh, our first minor item is Tanya regarding Tangoi or Kia ora. Kia ora, thank you. Um, <coughs> I visited uh, Hirahui with Fano last week at Tangoi, and one of their biggest concerns is the fact that they report that there's been no clean up to the hour at all. So there's still a container and woody debris in the middle of the hour. Um, fallen poplars are in the hour, and their fear is that when the next big rain comes, that is going to um, result in faster, worse flooding for them with debris still um, floating around. So my request was really um, probably directed at uh, Chris Dolly or someone from his team uh, when are they please going to get out to Tang Oil and clear that debris? It's been three months now. Mm. Kia ora, Tanya. Um, Piri, could, Piri, could you please follow up on that if, uh, with, with Chris and the team? Absolutely, Chair. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, um, we actually discussed this earlier on. And it was my suggestion that we bring it to this forum uh, because we all know that uh, Chris and his team are under the gun uh, and they've only got so much resource and their priority focus has been about the rebuild of which you'd indicated we've achieved 1.8 uh, kilometre progress. So it may well be some time. So I can approach Chris to see if there are other options or other alternatives, we're in to speed this up. Because if mm. we do get another weather event, mm. uh, then uh, the last thing we need is those communities traumatised mm -hmm. again. Can, can I just add to that, that um, Tangoil has no flood protection at all. Mm. And the only way to minimise flooding from minor events is to know that the drains and the river are clear. And if they're not, then those whānau homes are going to be flooded again. So I understand the priorities, but what what is the solution for them in the next... It doesn't have to be a big event. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. So, yes, Chi, I will raise that with Chris and his team. Yes, please. And, and a possible timeline would be helpful. Included. Kia ora. Um, Madam Chair, if I, if I can... Um, Naka holy at work it dark real, met the mea to la kia kwe kite, uh, kite wepua e tene take, kaimua e tiaruaro, hunga hunga e ahe ana te tutuki, ma here here, uh, among haru tangi tu, o tangoyo, o petani tenewa, uh, hueno, a taku e kitia to kutene mea te haumaru. O te hapuri ki reira. Nga tāku kā wai whakaheke, ana ki a rau atu ngā wai tuku kiri i te kiri o tangata ki a tangaroa. Koia rā, koia rā ngā kōra o tūpato kei mui a tātou. So I just want to um, support Tanya's uh, request on that. Myself and um, Bill accompanied the task force out there, and Bill has full, um, had full 
visibility over what Tanya is, is talking about. And I think, you know, when it comes to that psychosocial component of it, what happens is when our whānau continue to return there and nothing's been done, what it does is it actually uh, triggers this... Uh, I guess the impacts of colonisation or the notion of coloniality um, and this historical trauma starts to come forward for our people. And so it's, it's important that I would like to see that Ta Ngoi or um, in the request that Tanya is uh, putting forward is that this gets sort of pushed along the priority. Um, it's, it's a real, real concern for our, our whānau there, that it's not going to take much. I mean, it, it's sitting, we've got a container sitting in the river. You know, how, how much, how long is that going to take? How much time is that going to take? You know, um, there's, there's some real low-bearing fruit that can actually um, have uh, some somewhat a, a turnaround effect on that psychosocial um, impact that's on that's on the hapuri and the whānau out at Tāngoewa right now. Um, and there's some there's some real um, actionable solutions that that are sitting right there from the final. So I just want to um, pass the <coughs> to that. Okay, Kilda Kilda Thompson. Um, I won't you. raise that with the chief executive as well. Kilda, thank you. I'll also follow up. Um, okay, and our second minor item is Dr. Nick Peat, um, our new. Uh, permanent, who will start the 10th of July CE. Yes. So you might have already heard, so 10th of July is a Monday. Uh, <laughs> and um, I've already had contact from uh, my equivalent uh, down in Horizons regional area. And they're just seeking some clarification or confirmation around Pohiri and also around the detail. So I wanted to let you know that. And as we uh, identify a date, time, venue uh, for the Pohiri, uh, then I'll be in touch with each of you, as well as the Māori Committee and our uh, fellow TLAs as well. Just to let you know. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you for that pānui. Um, Kapai Koto, that is the end of our RPC meeting. We are going into workshop for those who can stay, please. <laughs> Um, but for now, that is the end of our meeting. Kilda John. And we will.